Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our POA meeting. Would we all stand and do our Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. While you're still standing, <laughs> um, we have to report that Tom Sullivan passed away today. As you know, uh, he was a very vibrant person in this community. The pavilion downstairs of this building is named after him. And uh, he was very involved with the community. And if we could just have a moment of silence. Thank you very much. Be seated. We have a few announcements. Uh, Diane Vanderbilt, would you like to come up and go to Seasiders? Hello, my name is Diane Vanderpoel. I'm a member of the Seasiders. I just wanted to call your attention briefly to two events that are coming up. First of all, we're having our annual bazaar here at the community center this Friday and Saturday. And then on Sunday, March 20, we are sponsoring a second house tour of Palm Beach Shores. Eight of our neighbors have graciously offered their homes uh, it will be from 1 to 5, Sunday, March 20. Uh, the homes are on Blossom, Cascade, Edwards, and Tacoma, so it's very walkable. The tickets are $25, and they also include refreshments at Town Hall from 1 to 5. And the proceeds from the house tour go to the charities that the Seasiders uh, support. So I do have tickets with me tonight. Does anyone else here have tickets with them? Uh, Joanne? Or Janet, I'm sorry. <laughs> Janet, yes. So we have them here, otherwise you can contact somebody from the Seasiders. And uh, it was very successful last time, I understand, so we're hoping to get them to turn out again. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. At our Chowder Fest, happy to report that the POA uh, we made $1,600 at that event. And it was the best performance. <laughs> Along with Rotary, of course, who uh, uh, helped out, and, uh, and a lot of POA people were there. And uh, as you know, I'm sure a lot of you were at that event, and it was unbelievable. We basically came to the point where we had to close the doors because we didn't have any more room or, or sitting. Uh, sitting uh, available for people. But yes, we made $1,600 on that event, and that was really great. Every year it seems to get better and better. Is the mayor here? He's just pulling in. He's just, He's just pulling in. Um, on March, Monday, March the 7th, I want you to put that date on your calendars, because that's when we're going to have the the mayoral candidates uh, uh, meet and greet, and uh, I'm sure they're going to be uh, saying a few things and uh, having a discussion. And it would be good uh, if we get uh, some people here to uh, listen to what they have to say about uh, about the election coming up. That's on Monday, March the seventh, and also for our board members, uh, the POA board. We have a meeting February the 16th, just as a reminder, at 5 o'clock at uh, 235 Claremont Lane. And uh, the election is March 15th, and you have until February 16th to register to vote. If you're not registered yet, you have until February 16th, or if you want to change parties. Because in Florida, you can only vote in the presidential primaries the same day. In Florida, you can only vote in the party that you're registered in. So if you want to, if you're not registered for the party and you want to vote, then you need to do that. Everyone can vote in the, in the municipal elections, but for the presidential primary, it's, uh, it's by party. So February 16th is the day. Ike, there's one more 
event you forgot to yes. mention. The fire department's annual fundraising cookout is February 28th downstairs here. Did everybody hear that? February 28th? Yes, downstairs. Downstairs, 12, fire and the cookout. I think it's 12 to 5. Fundraiser? Good. From 12 to 5. <laughs> Uh, Mayor John Workman is going to come up now and speak about uh, the town manager search and to meet our candidates. Do you have an announcement to make, sure. Mayor John? <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, just to um, take a few minutes of your time before. Uh, your keynote speaker uh, wanted uh, the opportunity to kind of update everyone on our town manager search um, and how that is going to play out schedule-wise. Um, but just to give you um, a background for those of you that have not followed this um, this item, perhaps uh, at the commission level, um, in late 2015. Uh, the town, at the suggestion of former town manager Cindy Blinsky, contacted the Senior Advisor Program of the Florida City and County Management Association and the International City Management Association to assist the town with a search for a new town manager. The Florida Senior Advisor Program is made up of seven retired city or county managers who provide CAO search guidance to smaller cities, towns, and counties at no cost. Kurt Bresner, the coordinator for the Florida Senior Advisor Program and former city manager of Boynton Beach, met with the town commission to explain the program and the town formally requested the assistance of the Senior Advisor Program. In December 2015, the Senior Advisor Program worked with the town commission and staff to develop a position profile for the town manager as well as the advertisement and other supporting search documents once the town commission approved the job profile job description and compensation the senior advisor program worked with staff to have the position advertised in late 2016 and late january of this year the town received 27 applications for the town manager position. Many of the applicants were seasoned town or city managers with Florida experience. A team of four senior advisors reviewed all of the applications and recommended eight semifinalists. On February 1st, 2016, senior advisor Kurt Bresner met again with the town commission and facilitated the selection of five finalist who will be interviewed in Palm Beach Shores on February 19th and February 20th. The five finalists are all experienced city town managers or assistant managers and most have extensive, extensive Florida municipal management experience. In preparation for the interviews on um, February 19th through the 20th, all five finalists will have background reviews performed by an outside firm specializing in public sector management search work. The five finalists will be submitting their answers to written questions in advance of the oral interviews. The senior advisor will prepare interview questions and assist the town commission with the interview process and to facilitate the selection of the final choice and an alternate on February 20th. So that takes you from start to finish in terms of the search. Um, I certainly want to make everyone aware on the 19th in the evening, we'll be sharing some more detailed news, but it's an opportunity uh, for the residents to meet and greet uh, the candidates in a somewhat uh, semi-formal setting here at the community center uh, to shake hands and uh, uh, introduce yourself. So uh, certainly a great opportunity uh, for those that are interested to be a part of the process. and. Uh, um, and meet some of these individuals prior to the formal interview on the 20th. So certainly want to encourage everyone to participate and be a part of that process. The interviews themselves on the 20th uh, are open.
open to the public and we invite you all to attend uh, the interview process as well. Okay? Any questions? Thank you. Tonight we have a very interesting program. We have Jennifer Nougat Hill from uh, Tropical Shipping. Uh, originally, uh, the CEO of uh, Tropical was going to be speaking, but he just uh, came out of surgery for hip replacement. So uh, our thoughts are with uh, with Rick Morrell. Uh, Jennifer Nugent Hill is uh, Director of Governmental and Community Affairs, and uh, she's trying to have a very exciting and, and entertaining program for us. Uh, the people that live on Inlet Way, as you know, they see these container ships come in and out all the time. They, I think they know all the names of every ship that does come in and out, but everybody believes or, or thinks, gee, what's in all those containers? And I think we might get a little information about that today and where they came from and where they're going. So Jennifer, you'd come up. And, uh, Thanks, I. Welcome. Thank you so much. Yes. Hello. Hello. I am simply happy to be here because, you know, being from the islands and living around the beach, yeah, I'm at home. <laughs> you know, so when you're from the U.S. Virgin Islands, I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, the U.S. Virgin Islands. How many have been to St. Croix? Best place. <laughs> My husband is from St. Thomas, the other side of the U.S. Virgin Islands. So I've been married to him now for 32 years, and I keep saying, boy, you still don't get it. St. Croix is the best place to live. <laughs> it is wonderful to be here, and I... I told I was sharing with my 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 seatmate Carol that uh, I'm happy to be here because I just feel like it's island. I've been part of the tropical sh shipping family since 1995, and uh, I've been coming to West Palm Beach since 1995. And um, my assignments over the years has been to. Uh, spread the gospel according to Tropical, and um, it's been a wonderful uh, spiritual experience, I should say. So I, I certainly want to thank uh, both uh, Myra and, and Ike for inviting me here, and as Ike mentioned, my CEO, Rick Morrell, had served me today, and um, uh, I'm just glad that he's doing well. He came out of surgery about an hour ago, and um, we, we wish him the best. Uh, he's having hit, he had a hip replacement, and he said the only reason he wanted to get it done was so that he could take his boat out and do fishing. <laughs> so I sure hope that it's uh, part of um, his uh, recovery process very speedily. So I'm going to share a little bit about our company, and uh, I'm also going to share with you an initiative that our company is involved with because I think it's an important uh, part of our economic development uh, experience. Uh, when I started uh, in 1995 working for Tropical, uh, I had just stepped out of my role as uh, a member of the governor's cabinet surviving Hurricane Hugo. How many people remember Hurricane Hugo? All right, well, I remember Hurricane Hugo, and those of you who experienced it understood what that was all about. And during that time, I remember the governor was being criticized uh, as was FEMA, and we all like to complain about FEMA, and a lot of us did. But Hurricane Hugo was a game changer uh, for, I think, all of us who uh, lived in the islands, and I'm sure for those of us who were living in South Carolina at the time, because the hurricane, you know, came through, came up the U.S. Virgin Islands, tore up St. Croix for over 24, 25 hours, and then went up to South Carolina. Hurricane Hugo changed, I believe, the whole measurement of how do you determine disaster resiliency and the Sapphire Citizen scale was evaluated and elevated because that was a 200 plus mile per hour wind. I lost everything, but I had my family and we survived. And I mention that because at the time I was part of the governor's cabinet and um, our governor at the time was being heavily criticized for not being around for the, for the hurricane process. But there was this guy 
named Rick Morrell and a company called Tropical Shipping that came with, at the time, uh, uh, Mrs. Quayle, Dan Quayle's wife, uh, was what she became one, one of our, our knights, uh, well, I should say our angels, I should say, uh, because she came to St. Croix uh, with Rick Morrell and the Tropical Shipping team to figure out what on earth was happening. We weren't seeing any recovery. FEMA was missing. But guess what? The state of Florida was being affected because tropical shipping was accustomed to taking tremendous amount of cargo from the state of Florida to the U.S. Virgin Islands. So while we were devastated by the hurricane, the economy of Florida was affected. And this company, Tropical Shipping, stood up and said, this is not acceptable. These are American citizens. This is our business partner. These are our people, and we have an obligation to assist. So I became curious about this tropical shipping. So I left public sector service. So I understand the search for the city manager. I understand that having some uh, uh, lived in that realm for a while. But tropical shipping, and you'll see that on the next slide, tropical shipping uh, decided that its primary responsibility as a company, and, and, and if, you, if you have not met Rick Morrell, and I truly hope that you get to meet Rick Morrell. Rick has been running our company for the last 45 years. We're a 50-year company, so you can imagine he pretty much was on the ground floor. But Rick decided that that experience uh, changed the values of, of Tropical. And for us, serving people is our guiding principle. And you'd want to say, well, how do you serve people as your guiding principle? Aren't you? A business that is in the business of making money? Absolutely. It is a guiding principle that has made us truly a very successful company. We're extremely proud of our achievements as a very, very profitable company. So over the years, we've created this shipping company dedicated to serving people. And more than simply moving cargo efficiently from here to there, and from here to there, it's approximately 25 different islands in the Caribbean. And I should add St. John's, New Brunswick in Canada, because we really sail from St. John. And for those who watch those big ships that comes in to the port of Palm Beach, you would have seen a lot of those ships, and they truly bring a lot of potatoes. They bring a lot of potatoes. <laughs> So Tropical has really focused on how do we help our Caribbean customers grow their business? How do we help those islands develop hospitals? How do we help those islands uh, cultivate their economies? And whenever I say that to folks, they say, well, what do you mean your shipping company helped to cultivate and grow the economies of the Caribbean? So let me share that with you. So Tropical Shipping serves all those company, all those countries that you see uh, on the side through this little tiny little port. And I'd like to share a little bit of statistics with you. How many of you believe that the United States largest trading partner is Canada? That's right. Canada's number one as of December 2014 data. <laughs> then Mexico, and in fact, in terms of export ranking, and I think it might be on the second slide, please. Canada, number one, Mexico, China, Japan, the UK, the Caribbean, almost $50 billion in 2014 of goods exported from the United States got into those 25 countries that I just shared with you. Can we afford to throw away $50 billion in export right from this port? I say that to say this, that the Caribbean being typically like what we have in Florida, sun, sea, you know, some investment opportunities, some manufacturing, you know, primarily rum, lots of rum. 
But think about this. If the Caribbean could be ahead of Germany, South Korea, Hong Kong, Brazil, and Netherlands, and this little company, your neighbors, can generate over $14 billion out of this port into the Caribbean. To me, I say that's an important part of the Florida economy. And in fact, I think it's a significant part of this county's economy. There are over 700 employees hired by Tropical Shipping that lives in between this area operating out of the port and our warehouse that is being reconstructed. Uh, we're building a bigger space over at MLK. We generate for this economy a significant amount of money that goes into making sure that the services that government is required that your new uh, county and uh, your new uh, uh, town manager will certainly want to be a part of. What we do in encouraging export from the state of Florida to the Caribbean is critically important. 85% of the Caribbean island's economy are driven by tourism. So we always say that if the Caribbean doesn't thrive in its tourism product, then all the goods and the products, be it refrigerated, cargo, and let me just give you a little joke. When I was hired by Tropical Ike, I was being interviewed similar to what you're gonna do with your town manager. And I remember at the time, his VP said to me, well, do you know what is our most profitable cargo? And I, uh, no. He said, reefer. I said, reefer? I'm a happy girl. I'm coming to work for this company. <laughs> Just kidding. That's not true. Refrigerated cargo is abbreviated reefer. <laughs> but our refrigerated cargo are all the poultries, all the frozen goods, that are imported into the Caribbean islands that are totally dependent and are shipped out of the state of Florida, as well as Georgia. We do bring a lot of chicken from Georgia. There's another company that's within the port of Palm Beach, and I, chances are you're probably familiar with them. It's called Merchants Market. Merchants Market imports, or uh, rather export from Florida, majority of the refrigerated reefer cargo to the islands of the U.S. Virgin Islands, the island of St. Martin, which is Dutch, uh, uh, Netherlands, uh, Antilles. And you would be amazed at the importance of what that represents for the economy of Palm Beach County. We hire truckers. Next slide. We hire logistics people. We hire customer service providers. We hire crane operators because I know you're curious about what are all those cranes doing? Those Manitowoc cranes and they lift containers and they place them in ships. And as you said earlier, I what are in what are the contents in those containers? So now you know the poultry, the building materials, the furniture, the beddings. The clothing, just about everything you can think of that are consumed comes through the state. So, what does this mean and why should you be interested in this? During the, the season of hurricanes, we pay particular attention and manage and monitor and, our, and do our best to ensure that the safety of our people first but the safe movement of cargo to the Caribbean. So as a result of our interest from, from both a, a financial perspective, as well as the priority being our people, we have adopted as a corporate initiative a focus on resiliency. And we say that because we want to ensure that not only our employees here in the state of Florida, but also our employees throughout the Caribbean and I mentioned over 600 between here, MLK, and our warehouse in Miami. But you can add to that tropical hires over 1,200 uh, persons working for our business throughout the Caribbean and the state of Florida and St. John, New Brunswick, and Canada. And so we have paid particular attention to adopting disaster resiliency 
for the islands by encouraging as a corporate initiative the preparedness of partnership for public-private partnership and emergency uh, preparedness and response. We've been doing that here in the state of Florida and in particular in Palm Beach County. We're pushing the issue. We believe that the business community, the private sector needs to become a part of the process of disaster readiness because, as I started out by saying, Hurricane Hugo destroyed the economy of St. Croix. It impacted the U.S. and especially that of Florida, and folks started seeing numbers that didn't look well, and of course, the usual humanitarian concern, and the shipping company uh, took the cause and decided that we needed to change that because it was impacted all of us. So, we've decided that there is also a growing demand. Some of the highest paid employees at Tropical are our crane operators. Crane operators here uh, in Florida, crane operators in the U.S. Virgin Islands, in Puerto Rico, uh, and throughout the other islands. Our business is structured in a way that some employees are directly hired by us, like in the U.S. Virgin Islands, they're employees of Tropical Shipping because we are U.S. But here in Palm Beach County, some of the best crane operators you will ever find operate our business right here in the Port of Palm Beach. Now, one of the good things about Tropical is that it's a great company to work for and so we have tenured employees. But like me, who will be celebrating my 60th birthday this year, we're getting older. And so that means we've got to start finding the next set of employees to continue our business. So we have decided to join in the effort of discussion with regards to workforce development. And we've signed on to this partnership with the North uh, uh, Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce and the Rivera Beach Business Council. And I'm sharing this with you because we believe that Florida's future in terms of trade and logistics is critically important. I shared with you the numbers earlier. I said billions. And when the Caribbean is successful, Florida is successful, Truckers are employed, drivers, mechanics, maintenance, customer service, IT personnel, and it goes on. So why am I sharing this with you and why should you be interested? Well, your neighbor, me, Tropical Shipping, an important part of your business economy, our employees, our neighbors, some of your friends, we're getting old. So the future of our workforce need and the expansion of the economy for the state of Florida in terms of trade is critically important. So we have decided to join in this conversation and push this initiative with regards to trade and logistics. Logistics meaning everything that moves, whether it's through an electronic measure or for those who are buying from Amazon and you're gonna have it delivered to your house by a drone, that's logistics. It is happening, it will happen. We recognize that trade and logistic jobs represents a tremendous amount of workforce development issues for the state of Florida. So between now and the next 12, 18 months, we have made a commitment to partner with the educational resources here in the state of Florida, and more specifically, here in Palm Beach, and especially that of Rivera Beach. Next slide, please. We know that the jobs are there. We know the jobs are going to grow. But we also know that with 14 major distribution centers here in the state of Florida and in this county, with over $2.3.2 million of warehouse square feet of warehouse space, it suggests to us that more and more of our employees are going to have to be retrained. We know the, the gaps are widened because we look at the curriculum and recognize that if you're, you know, like me, old school vocational skills student who determined that I wanted to get a job when I graduated from high school, but I was a pretty good student, so I went on, graduated out of vocational education, decided I was going to be a lab technician, ended up today working for a private company managing our government affairs. But I was prepared. 
I enjoyed vocational education. I had a skill. I could find a job. I was prepared. I knew what the job demand occupation is. Well, today, that's an issue. So for us, we recognize that there are over nearly a thousand firms here in this county that are in the business of logistics. Whether they call themselves logistics or transportation, if they're providing commodity that transports itself, that is trade, or if they're in the business of supplying, there is a logistics side to it. So we want to make sure that the message is clear, that the business of logistics and distribution in the maritime industry is one that is critically important, and the growth opportunities for the state to continue to have a vibrant economy is going to be dependent on its partners down in the Caribbean and elsewhere. But for us, certainly important is that we have folks ready to take these jobs. Next slide. So this is an overview as to exactly what we're proposing, and we want you to be aware of it, because some of you may be asked to participate in some data gathering and, 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 and sharing information. Our overall goal is to, ed to engage education, workforce, and industry partners, highlight these regional opportunities. I was in Jacksonville, I think, Myra, you, I, I can't remember if you went on that tour uh, to Jack's port, uh, uh, to Jack's USA, which is a Chamber of Commerce initiative, and they work with their business partners on their workforce development for Duval County, and they have a great success story because they're graduating uh, folks who will be able to take the jobs in Jacksonville. Well, we want to mirror exactly that success story, and that's part of what we're doing here. So we want to highlight those regional opportunities, the supply chain and logistics needs and transportation, and raise awareness to our educators that they need to rethink the curriculum for the workforce needs or the job development uh, opportunities that they are. <coughs> so as I said, part of the key element in the success of this information is going to be data-driven, engaging employers uh, to share their needs, give us specific jobs uh, opportunities that they're creating, and of course develop a roadmap for the strategic uh, plan and recommendations to our educational system. I think that may be my last slide. So, I want to tell you that tropical shipping, uh, as your neighbor, we are a significant part of this uh, economy. We are equally concerned about the state of Florida's uh, uh, economy being strong. Uh, we are extremely passionate about the Caribbean being strong because after all, the numbers I shared with you demonstrate what the Caribbean represents in terms of trade. And when folks think of the Caribbean, you only think of sand, sea, and sun. But I want you to think of the green that it brings to the state of Florida by the monies that we buy our goods. All right? I thank you for having me. Please. three that are on lease or higher. The season for us uh, can oftentimes get very, very busy. <clears throat> so we accommodate over the, in the seasonal uh, for the Caribbean, we take additional ships, so we, we lease vessels. So we have 19 ships, 73, 20 ships that are operating right now. And I'm happy to tell you, um, our, our operations um, team, uh, VP just came back from uh, China because we're looking to have two new ships built that are environmentally uh, uh, safe. Uh, we're looking towards cleaner fuel, LNG is uh, our alternate. And by the way, I should have mentioned that tropical shipping uh, was acquired uh, by the company known as Salcha, which is a Seattle-based company. And uh, they're in the business of, um, we acquired just September, we just had our first anniversary. And they're in the business as well as, as transportation. We happen to be their first international company. It's strictly that of Alaska, Hawaii. Um, and so with, with Salchuk acquiring Tropical and their fleet of trucks and air cargo and other vessels, it's made us a part of a larger group uh, of, of company and a, and, and a stronger. And by the way, it's owned by three sisters. 
I'll just say. Are there any other questions? Chuck. Matt, Chuck Allen. Hi, Chuck. If you're so interested in, uh, in America, why are you seeking uh, bids in China for your, for your shipping? You know, that's a very good question. Are you aware that our shipyards, and that's another initiative we're working on, our shipyards in the U.S. are no longer constructing ships as we used to? That's a big deal for us. And do you know why? Our own laws in our country has made it uncompetitive for shipyards. More and more shipyards are being closed. Now I tell you the strategy that we're using. We're demanding that the materials and the design of those vessels be American design and American parts from American company. If my boss was here, he would tell you that is the greatest of his frustration. The shipyards in our country are no longer manufactured. And in fact, a number of parts of the shipyards that are still functioning, including those that are over in Freeport, are not owned by Americans anymore. Yes. Gil. Yes, you're absolutely right. And I'd like to talk to you about that because that's an initiative we think that our own uh, congressional representative needs to be aware of. And I'm on it. <laughs> Gil. Great presentation. Thank you, Gil. But, you know, like, I'm a, I'm a dyslexic guy, and how many oranges are on there? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> Any other uh, questions? Yes. yes. My name is Diane Kerrigan. Hi, I'm Diane. curious about, there seems to always be a ship sitting off of Palm Beach, yes. and it just sits, it sits there. I think it's the same one. It doesn't seem to come in. But I don't know if it's one of yours, or if you know why the ships just sit out there. I know it's not ours. Oh, OK. <laughs> the tides, aren't they? Uh, well, that may be an issue, but none of our vessels are ever in port or state. We don't make money if our vessels are ever but still. There is a ship sitting off of, um, Palm Beach. Yeah. It seems to have been there for over a month, and it doesn't seem oh, to be Not ours. I, I, will look, I, I don't know, but I, I will find out and what I can find out from the port. I'll let Tom has the answer. Okay, Tom. There's an anchorage off Palm Beach, and that allows the ship to wait their turn to come into the port. They can be one, two, or three at a time. Yeah, well, we wouldn't have a ship out there for a month, so I yeah. promise you that. I yeah. Think there might be different ones. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Thank you. Well, Nada? Is there anything we can do about the smog? Mm -hmm. the, the, you're on the beach and you choke when all those <laughs> uh, vessels come in. I am never. I've never heard that there is an issue with regards to smog, but I can tell you that for us, we have signed on to the Climate Compact. In fact, we are the only U.S. company that has signed on to the uh, Carbon Compact uh, Agreement to deal with the emission uh, from vessels, uh, including clean burning, uh, non-toxic uh, sulfur fuel. It's for those reasons that Seven of our ships have already been converted to dual uh, to dual uh, fuel usage. Yes, Barb. Her question was, how long does it take to load uh, a, a, a vessel? So in our fleet, we have some ships that are, are 900 plus uh, TUs. Those are what we call 20 feet equivalent containers. Because containers come in various sizes. You can have some that are 53 footers. We don't have those primarily in our fleet because the markets that we go to don't demand that. Uh, but you'll have 40 foot containers, 45 feet containers. We strive because it's a goal for us to be able to lift on and lift off within an hour at least 40 containers. Very important because, as I said, we don't want ships sitting in ports, containers. It's like for, that's how we 
That's how we make our money. Uh, so we have a standard here. One of the things about the Port of Palm Beach is, is, is in, in spite of its size, we are considered one of the most efficient operating uh, container port. And that's because we strive to be safe, it's always our first priority, but also to be able to be efficient in, the, in, in moving containers off and on those vessels. Yeah? And for me, as a spectator, I enjoy seeing the names on the different ships. And yeah. someone told me once that the further toward the end of the alphabet, the name of the ship is the larger. Okay, yeah, it's part of it. We started out, I don't remember what this, what's the first one, I think it's the Tropic. Oh God, I don't remember, but the Tropic Tide and the Tropic Sun. Most of our vessels usually start with um, Tropic something. Yes, it's an exciting, for me, whenever I need to reduce some of my stress, I go and watch the operations. It's fascinating to just sit there uh, and see those containers uh, moving and knowing that you are actually affecting the lives of people in the best way. Because one of the things in the Caribbean has always been, a, and it's why Tropical has maintained such a very strong presence uh, in, and, and is a niche carrier into the Caribbean, it's because we recognize that the development for healthy food is how fresh you can get it. And so we pride ourselves in making sure that our vessels are getting to the ports on time, every time. So your question is quite appropriate in terms of how long does it take to load those vessels. The synergies are so critically important for, for all of us in that regard. Yes? I wonder what the top three products that are imported and the top three exported. Uh, imported from the Caribbean, uh, and it varies. For in the U.S. Virgin Islands, it is uh, manufacturing. From a manufacturing perspective, it is it is rum. Uh, there's a lot of rum that is um, <laughs> Crucian rum from St. Croix, because that's where and Captain Morgan um, on the island of St. Croix, in terms of the U.S. Virgin Islands. There's small manufacturing, electronic manufacturing that are also uh, moved, but, but when you're moving small electronics, there's always time sensitivity, so they do a lot of air cargo. Um, in some of the other islands, we are importing um, uh, some building materials. Um, we're not doing oil uh, export, that used to be a LNG from, tri from uh, Trinidad was a big export to the US. We're now no longer having to do that because we got our own blood of that. Um, and, uh, and you know, we're not involved in the moving of gold and um, other uh, minerals, but from, from the country of Guyana, where we have a presence, that is a, a commodity. Lots, lots of minerals are moved out of Gu uh, Guyana. Um, bauxite out of Jamaica, we don't get involved with that, um, the movement of bauxite, but that, that's a big commodity that's exported out of the Caribbean. Uh, in terms of what we are taking in, importing from, from uh, Florida, it is fresh fruits, vegetables, um, frozen meats, uh, chicken, poultry, um, a lot of that, and a lot of building materials um, as well uh, move uh, to just about everything that you can think of that is consumed. The Caribbean is a very high consumable community. They're trying to create a balance of trade, but manufacturing is not easy. No one is doing sugar cane anymore, so it's, it's, a, it's a different thing. Yes, I Vinny, you've got a question? Yeah. Hi, Vinny. Was your company impacted by the container ship that sunk? Yes. Was it your ship? Our sister vessel, yes. Explanation of why they went out there? No, I can't. No, I can't come comment to that. No. Okay. Well, oh, one more question. Gail? Yes, Gail. What is the bottom line for the ship coming in, number of days, ship comes in, ship goes out? If you can turn a ship around, uh, and my operational, and my operations guys will probably kill me and say, what? <laughs> uh, because our vessels are scheduled so well in terms of our commitment to the markets, very rarely will you see our ships overnighting for two or three days. We try to turn those ships around within the time frame that it comes. And, 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 and it's also the standard that we maintain in the other islands as well, because the ship goes, we've got to come back. So we have 
similar standards for turning around the vessels to bring containers in so they can be reloaded and back out uh, to, to the Caribbean. So it's a constant moving uh, event. And, and, and some of those vessels, uh, by the way, I mentioned, you know, the question was asked how many ships we have. Some of those uh, vessels um, are in rotation in the islands. They don't come to the state of Florida, so we do what we call transshipment. So the big vessels will take stuff to, say, St. Thomas, uh, and those, some of those containers are transshipped onto smaller vessels going into ports that don't have deep water or don't have all that's necessary to, you know, to manage uh, different ships. So we do have ships that are in rotation in the Caribbean doing transshipment. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you very much for your time. Greatly appreciated by all. And uh, what a great neighbor uh, to have on Paul B. Shores. Tropical. Uh, served the county well, great employment opportunities. And uh, of course, uh, most of the residents here. Uh, Always get a thrill of seeing one of those large container ships uh, come in and out. So that's always great. And now, um, Nina brought a shipment in. Not with Tropical, I don't believe, <laughs> did you? A shipment of pizza. Yeah, we have pizza from the Islander. There's four points in the middle. Yes. Same on both sides. And please stay and uh, enjoy a little time of fellowship and uh, have some pizza. And I think we are adjourned.